Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we hope to give you some insight on how colleges recruit for wrestling and what the process is. My guest today is Daniel Mayo. He's the former uh, Penn State University All-American, two-time All-American for wrestling, and two-time uh, USA team for wrestling as well. Uh, welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you, Anthony, for having me. Yeah, no problem. So usually I start my uh, with my guests with um, you know where they went to college. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it's right. Penn State University. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, what years did did you go there? I attended Penn State 1983 through 1988. Wow. So tell me, uh, how did it all begin? Did it, did it start out when you were uh, a tiny tyke, or did you? start out in high school wrestling? How did this all start out for you? It, uh, like most kids, I started out at a pretty early age uh, with wrestling and um, my brother Joey, who's five years older than I am, was a uh, pretty accomplished wrestler in uh -huh. high school himself. Okay. He used to take me to the high school wrestling practices at Sachem High School on Long Island. Wow. When I was in sixth grade, he'd bring me to the varsity practices and I used to get the daylights beat out of me. Oh my God. But you learn pretty quick, and we were pretty good in wrestling. So I started out in fourth, fifth grade, but started working out with the varsity team in sixth grade. Right. So I really, I, I really uh, advanced at a pretty quick pace, oh, okay. wrestling kids that were much better than myself. Sure, sure. And so now you get into high school, and what's the process in high school for wrestling? Well, in New York, New York's a little bit different than, than New Jersey or Pennsylvania. New York, you could wrestle on the varsity in seventh grade. Oh, okay. Where New Jersey, you start in ninth grade, as oh, wow. well as Pennsylvania. Now, Pennsylvania may be eighth grade. Okay. New York, seventh grade. So I was good enough to wrestle in seventh grade on the varsity, and... and wow had an opportunity to win a state championship. My father did not allow me. Oh my God. He said, no one is taking my seventh grade kid for their varsity program. And <laughs> he's gonna, and I thank him for this. So I wrestled seventh grade with the seventh graders, okay. eighth grade with the eighth graders, ninth grade with the ninth graders. Now I got my coach, the high school coach, is begging my father, what are you doing? We need him. My dad didn't care. It was about going to school, hanging out with your friends, having fun wrestling. He right. didn't push me. Okay, good. Ninth, sorry, 10th grade, he finally let me wrestle on the varsity. So, you know, you, you hear about a lot of kids getting burned out. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't burned out. Right, because, because you, you my, had all this of just playing against the kids in your own grade. Just my own, that's all my father let me do. Okay. Until 10th so grade. So now you're in 10th grade, and, and, and what happens? 10th grade, I, um, you know, I made an impact right away. I was, I was pretty good at the sport. So I, was, um, I didn't win the states, but I had beaten the state champ, the defending state champ that year. Um, but New York's a, it, it's divided into 12 counties. No, sorry, 11 counties, and then you have the Catholic School League. So they only take one person from each county to go to the states. Oh, wow. So, in essence, there's only 12 kids in your weight. Where in New Jersey, there's 32. They take 32 kids wow. across the state. Just happens, the guy that I lost to in the county finals, Wayne Caton, who's a great college wrestler, I lost to him. He just happened to be in my wake. We were the two best guys in the state. Oh, my God. I didn't get a chance to go. Wayne went. And, um, but in high school, I only lost three times through my whole career. Wow. And, um, and won a national title and state titles. And so, I did everything you could do. So when did, when did you start getting recruited? I started getting uh, the recruiting process started when I was in 10th grade. I had beaten some of the best kids in the state. And um, at that time, colleges were allowed to send you letters. So that, that process started then. And, um, but again, my father was the one who, he basically controlled everything. Mm -hmm. He wasn't gonna let anyone take advantage of me. And how many schools were recruiting you in the 10th well, grade? Well, by, I, you know, I, there were a number of schools. I was, 
Not and I mean not the the Penn States of the world at that time or the Iowas or right. Oklahomas, um, but you know uh, Army, you know the uh, sure, you know West Point. Sure, sure. They recruited me as well as a number of you know teams that were ranked twentieth or may, and lower. Oh, okay. Um, but that soon changed my junior year, and then I had every school. Wow, so that's fantastic. So now you have all these schools. So what what can you tell parents to? How do they navigate through so many schools recruiting you at such a an early age of you know tenth grade? What did, what are your parents saying to you at this point? Well, you know what? Again, I was in a fortunate position, um, but what parents need to understand: you're only allowed five official visits to go visit a school mm -hmm. and uh, you go visit, you know, um, you know, with the coach as well as academic advisors, mm -hmm. see the campus. You're only allowed five paid visits. Okay. So, so the school is taking care of you. School is taking care of me. That's called an official visit. Okay. So you basically have to narrow, you got to sit down with your folks and say, you know what, let me pick five, five schools that I really... Out of the uh, hundreds that, that you got. That I'm interested in. I got you. And the number one thing, obviously, is you look at the academics. Is there a fit? Is there something I'm interested or what's academically, academically as well as athletically? Wrestling, we know they're good in wrestling. Right. We know that. Um, so, so other than Penn State, who were the other four that you went to go visit? I, I narrowed my choices down to my first. It was Oklahoma State. Okay. Who was a top two school, mm -hmm. Iowa State, North Carolina, wow. Oklahoma, wow. University of Oklahoma, sure. and Penn State was my last visit. Yeah. But I had, you know, I had Nebraska, you know, I had every school, you know, contacting me. Sure, and, sure. And I narrowed it down to those five. And, um, and so now they're all recruiting you. These five schools are heavily recruiting, uh, I'm assuming. Now, what are the coaches saying to you to entice you to come to their school? Well, what you, obviously, they're, they're, these coaches are salesmen, and that's what parents have to understand. These schools, it's not about the sport. Mm -hmm. the rest, they're running a business. Okay. Wrestling is a small part of it. Right. But they're running, they're the CEO of their team. Gotcha. Okay, and you're a component, they think, that'll fit in and help that, that program succeed. I got you. Um, you need to, um, again, you, you, you're a small, small piece. Right. Okay, but what parents, they, they, need to, they need to look at the history of the program. That's very important. Mm -hmm. You want to check what... People in the sport that you know, you you need to check on the reputation of the coaching staff. Right. Um, so, are your mom and dad doing this work for my, you at that? Yeah, time? My, my my father and, and my mom were, you know, because my brother kind of went through the process. They knew the important things to look at. And again, you want to be around good people. Yeah. You want to look at the graduation rate mm -hmm. of the team. So, what are you looking at as a seventeen-year-old? What are you looking at when you go visit these schools? Well, it's funny because I, I went, I, I took a few recruiting trips, and Oklahoma State was one of them. They were like the best in the country, and I'm, you know, I'm I'm out in Oklahoma, <laughs> and I had a fun time on my recruiting trip, and from you know, it was fun. <laughs> I wasn't meeting academic advisors on this trip, and, and I was fine with it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I told my brother about the trip, how great it was, and he told my father, so my father said, cross that off the, the list. <laughs> so that was short-lived, thinking I was going to Oklahoma State, and they were on me hard, as well as Oklahoma and all the other schools, but that's how all my trips were. It was kind of about having fun. Right. And uh, Because you, as a 17-year-old, that's what you're looking for in the college, is to have fun. Have fun, you're going out, you're going right. to parties. So you need your mom and dad as the support system to say, wait a minute, okay, you can have fun, but you can also have to look at the academics and graduating you know, look, and so on. And, and Penn State now, 
Penn State was the only school I could drive to to take the visit. So my, my father went with me and um, went with me on the trip. And the first thing, Coach Lorenzo, who I'm good friends with today, um, he was like a father figure to me, you know, once I started school there. He picked me up from uh, where we, we met at a central location on the campus. Yeah. In a 1965 Ford Falcon, oh, look nothing at this. fancy. You didn't know the car. Where, where these other schools, you know, it was limousines. It was all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, he picked me up right away. We went to go see Sandy Meyer, the academic advisor. She took me around to classes, and I was like, "What's she doing?" Like, but bottom line is, my father loved this. Wow. Um, that was. That's how you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're if that coach is not putting the academics first, there's probably an issue. So did your mom and dad go to the other schools with you, or, or no? They didn't? No, um, no, my father. No, they didn't. They just paid for me to go. Okay. But my father was on the phone with me, and back then we didn't have cell phones. Right. But he was making sure I wasn't going to sign anything, because the, these coaches sometimes they sure they want you to sign on the dotted line. Right. And, uh, and what parents need to understand is a lot of kids feel bad saying no to a coach. These coaches get more no's than they do yeses. Mm -hmm. They understand. So don't you can't let a coach pressure you in. So what would you say is the recruiting process for, for wrestling? It's, it's just starting out early for these coaches, uh, ninth, 10th grade? Well, you know what? The, the recruiting process is much easier for a, a decorated wrestler obviously yeah kid that's won a couple state titles who's done you know you know well on the sport whereas a kid that may be average average which most kids are right there's still a great opportunity for you to wrestle at the place of your dreams every team the best teams in the country they have average wrestlers on the team all t all different kinds of wrestlers make a team right. not everyone's a superstar right but what parents have to understand, your average wrestler, your son, can become a great wrestler. He's, I'm sure he's got potential. Yeah. And you have the potential to earn money if you don't get money. But again, you need to identify schools. You know, if, if you want to wrestle Division I, right. you identify those schools. And if they're not reaching out to you, you could have your academic advisor at the school reach out, the wrestling coach reach out to the coach. And you make your case and, and you're interested and and you're probably not going to get athletic money 99.9% .9 of the time but there's other ways to get money there's academic money mm -hmm. there's obviously financial aid right you got to you your academic advisor should know that and your wrestling coach there's other areas that you may qualify for right. money then division 1 is not the answer there's division 2 wrestling there's Division Three wrestling. There's junior college wrestling. There's NAIA wrestling. It gives you an opportunity to, to fulfill your dreams in wrestling, yeah. all at a different level. But not everyone can wrestle at Penn State University. Right. So, so now, tell me a little bit about um, the USA team. How how does how does one go from college to the USA team? Or are you doing this while you're in college? No, you know what? Some kids are good enough where they can do it while they're in college, and I I, I never pursued it while I was in college. Mm -hmm. I you know I sustained an injury my freshman year in college that put me out for a year and a half, and I was a starter right away at Penn State and mm -hmm. um, and had a lot of success, but. I lost in the NCAA finals as a senior, and and that was my dream. I've always dreamt of being an NCAA champion. It didn't happen, and I got beat by a guy, Royce Alger from Iowa, who's a very good friend of mine. And and um, is he an Olympic champion? He wound up the year he beat me. I took off for that year. He continued. So the NCAA finals are in March. The third week of March, yeah. he continued to to wrestle after his senior year. He wound up making the USA team as the number one guy and placing second in the world wow. three or four months after I wrestled him. So 
I was wrestling one of the best guys in the world. We were very good. Oh, my God. I just had one of the best guys in the world in my weight class in college. Sure. So um, I took a year off. I just needed to get away from the sport. I went to Washington, D.C. I worked for a congressman. And at that time, you know, I was out, out of wrestling, working, and I needed to do something. I signed up for the New York Marathon, and I hated running. But I said, I got <laughs> to set goals. I got to do something. And I did it. I started running a mile a, a, mile a day, and I wound up finishing in you know, decent time, the New York Marathon. I then went back to school because now I saw Royce Alger doing this on the world level, mm -hmm. a few other wrestlers, and I'm like, I beat these guys. Wow. So I you know, worked for a year. Penn State wanted me to come back and train, help coach the team, and then train to make the USA team. So now I'm starting at the bottom, but once I entered a few tournaments, so the USA team is now, what, 1992 when you're... This was, um, so my, when I went back to Penn State, my goal was to be a gold medalist in 1992. That yeah. was my goal. I um, made... And where's the Olympics in 1992? Barcelona. Barcelona. They're in Barcelona. So they, um, I started training, going, you know, entering the tournaments where you, you, you need to qualify to make the, it's called the World Team Trials or the Olympic year, it's called the Olympic Trials. I qualified to make that, and um, I wound up, you know, I beat the 1991 world champion. He was from the United States, Chris Campbell. I beat him, lost to Dan Shade. His top, top three guys make the USA team. Lost to Dan Shade. Uh, he, was, he wrestled for the University of Oklahoma, a few years older than I was. Um, lost to him two out of three. Beat him and lost to him two matches. Very competitive. But um, so the top three guys, and Chris Campbell wound up beating Dan Shade. Oh my God. And he's the world champ. He, um, he wrestled in the, the Olympics that year. Right. So I helped him train and, and get ready for the Olympics. And he wound up, now Chris Campbell was 38 year old. So God. the only way of making the Olympics, from what you're saying so far, is really just winning throughout these types of tournaments. You have to go to qualifying tournaments. They, were, they, were, they have a, a number of them. So, so for the viewers out there, it's not just college. If you want to do wrestling, if you're really good at wrestling, you, there is something afterwards for them, the oh, Olympics, if they want to go no. into that direction. Just because you, you may not have placed in the NCAAs and become an All-American in college or won a national title, you could still win a gold medal. You got to continue and work hard every day and yeah. enter these tournaments. And um, so now you're at the Olympics. You you made it to the. Olympic I made team? I made the USA team. I trained with the team. I I wound up not going to Barcelona. Okay. Because you know I, they they took Dan. I believe Dan Shade went, but um, they pick a few guys to go. I got gotcha. you. If case someone gets hurt, gotcha. but you're on call. Just in case. You, just in case. Yeah. So. Um, but now I had dreams of making the 1993 USA team. Okay. Now, this is uh, it's pretty um, interesting. I, I wound up wrestling for a, a team called Foxcatcher. And John DuPont of the DuPont family owned that team at a new town square, Pennsylvania. Oh. So he took 30 of the best guys in the world and paid us. And we trained. So I, you know, living in Skillman, New Jersey, I drove to Newtown Square an hour and 15 minutes every day to train with the best guys in the world. Wow. He had a big estate where kids, wrestlers lived on the estate because they were from all over the Yeah, so how many people were there? We pro probably 20 people lived on his estate. Wow. Unfortunately, John and the movies coming out like within a month. It's called Foxcatcher. John wound up killing the, my teammate, the Olympic gold medalist, Dave Schultz. Oh my God. With a gun, killed him one day after practice. Oh, now that's just a whole other story. But, this, it, but and I, the actor that is playing Dave, his name was Dave Schultz. Mark Schultz is his brother, who's a world champion on the team. Wow. The, the actor playing Mark Schultz is um, Chatham 
Tatum. Tatum he's yeah. he's the, the new hot actor. Yeah, sure. He's playing Mark Schultz, but the movie comes out on our team. It's um, going to be re released like any day. Wow. So you so were you were an advisor on that that movie? No, you know what? They they picked a few guys and um but you know what? Every, and that was the last day I wrestled, the day he killed Dave Schultz. Oh my god. So, back to my my career. I I didn't make the team in 93. I got injured in Bulgaria. Wow. I hurt my shoulder so I couldn't wrestle that year. Yeah. I came back in 94, made the team. And then um the incident happened with um with this whole situation with uh john dupont and um and that's when i stopped wrestling wow. i just it was tough interesting story yeah. very interesting but, story um, so so now um the usa team is done college is done um now you're advising you're you're consulting uh wrestlers that are out there you know what i was confronted with it, and that's what parents and kids have to understand your wrestling days they're going to end. And guess what? You need that degree. You need to go out and get a job. Right. And, um, and when my career ended, I had to go get a job. And thank God, you know, I went to school at Penn State and got a degree and, and was pretty marketable. Um, so I, I had landed a job, and um, now my career starts. But along the way, and I, I always dedicated time to helping wrestlers. wrestlers out, you know, and I wound up developing a great relationship with Rider University, which is a local school, and yeah. those guys over there have become great friends of mine, but I, I helped coach there for 10, 12 years, and yeah. I continue to, to support Gary Taylor and his program, um, but along the way, I started seeing kids that they, they thought their dreams were over in wrestling because they didn't win the states in high school or they didn't do great things. It's yeah. not over. Mm -hmm. If you want to wrestle in college, there's a place for you. And I had the wherewithal where if, you know, Tom Jones from Hillsboro thought his career was over but he wanted to wrestle, I had the wherewithal to, to say, hey, you know what, I'll contact... Ten Somewhere. Division Three coaches, Ten Division Two, Ten Division One. I need to learn about you. I need to make sure you're a good kid and you're going to work hard. Yeah. And there's a place for you. So if families out there are looking for someone just for wrestling, they can contact you. Absolutely. So is there a way of families being able to contact you? Well, just I, I, my personal email address. Okay, which is? Uh, which is Dan Mayo, M-A-Y-O, 0198 at AOL.com. Okay, great. And and so these families, you know, they just might have just average kids. Um, when they're contacting you, uh, what do you usually start them out with of, you know, what kind of advice? Well, you know, obviously you want to know about their, their wrestling background. But more importantly, you need to know how they're doing academically where their strengths are, and, and that, that determines a lot. I mean, if a kid's got a 4.0 coming out of high school, you know they what? They get a lot more money than somebody else. Do you want to know something? A lot of Division I schools want that kid. Yeah. Because that helps the team GPA. Right. And you got a, probably a pretty good kid if you have a 4.0 in high school. There's yeah. a lot to be said for that. Sure. A lot of great teams want that type of kid on the team. So are you saying that the colleges are looking for an all-around type of athlete, someone that's not just academically and athletically sound, but do they do other things as well? Uh, they, they're looking for a well-rounded kid. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, you know, some schools, obviously, if you're uh, the best in the country, maybe they don't care how well-rounded you are as long as you show up the yeah, day sure. of the match and win. Yeah. But... Um, but for the most part, you need to be a well-rounded kid. You need to be a good kid on the mat and off the mat. In the classroom, hanging out with your friends, you need to conduct yourself the right way. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's real important. And, and parents need, you know, a lot of parents aren't educated on this recruiting process or identifying a school that is the place for their kid. You need to reach out to people. There's people out there that can help. And... Um, 
And I've been, it's, and it's, and they're great stories for me, just helping. Um, I just had an incident, um, well, last week, a kid that I helped get into big university, West Virginia. And again, he was, he's an average wrestler, but a tough kid, comes from a good family mm -hmm. and wanted to go to West Virginia. And I assisted, I made calls over there. This was last year. He wound up, they wound up taking him on the team. Oh. They got rid of the coach after the season. Oh, wow. The whole coaching staff. Oh. The new coach comes in. He cuts all the kids that were walk-ons, cuts them. This kid now is devastated. Wow. I knew the head coach, so I called him up. And I told him about this kid and how hard he works and told him about the good family. He's a solid student. He'll be a great addition to your team. But I also understand the coach's position. He's mm -hmm. trying to, he's the CEO of his program. Right. And he's got to build it the way he sees fit. But he, he made a decision to keep him, which is, and I, you know, I just heard this Friday and it was great to, yeah. you see how happy the kid is and, um, but yeah, that's great. But there's, there's, there's ways to get things done out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Dan, um, time has flown by, and it's almost time at the end of our show. Uh, what do you want to leave the parents out there um, with any type of advice? Well, you know, I, I, as I alluded before, don't give up on your dreams. You know, consult with people. Make sure you're close with your academic advisor. Um, you're the coach of your team or whatever sport you're playing. And don't start as a senior in high school. This process should start 10th, definitely 11th grade, you know, early in the school year. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you got to start thinking about colleges and your future and what you want to do. And I know a lot of kids don't think about that. You need to think about that, and you start getting on the process right from there. Great. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. And you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning with your host, Anthony Yuba. Until next time. <laughs>